We're coming to you from the Radford Studio Center lot in Studio City, right over the hill from Hollywood. This is the place where dreams are made, legends are born. Hello and welcome to the lot. I'm Suzanne Marquez. The fine dining scene is big on price, tiny on portions, and a new dark comedy takes a stab at the snooty and unsufferable foodies who are drawn to the scene. It's jam-packed with star power. I talked to Nicholas Holt, Anya Taylor-Joy, and Judith Light. This is the menu. Is that gonna fit everyone? Yeah, easily, 12 customers total. How do they turn a profit? 12.50 a head, that's how. What are we eating, a Rolex? It's one of his classics. In the menu, a group of snobby food writers, macho tech bros, and self-professed foodies travel by boat to a remote island to eat at an ultra-exclusive restaurant. You have to try the mouthfeel of the mignonette. Please don't say mouthfeel. Nicholas Holt and Anya Taylor-Joy play opposites. He's eager to please the chef, played by Ray Fiennes. Welcome to Hawthorne. Anya plays Margot, the lone diner Margo. unlike the rest. My name is Margot. I've served many Margots. You're not a Margot. It was interesting to be in those environments because then you got a sense of how, when you feel inadequate in that environment, how desperate you are to please yeah. and to prove that you you do belong there. And, and so the I think the craziness of that, considering that you're paying for a service, <laughs> yeah, and yet you feel like, please take my money. Yeah. Like, please let me. So that's something that was very easy to then put into Tyler because it's like he's so desperate to be accepted. Yeah. Just feel like he belongs there. Um, and that falls apart for him. Mm -hmm. Judith Light plays Anne, whose rich husband is usually able to buy his way out of anything, but not during this dark dinner. We're leaving now. No, I have, have to get my wrap. Forget your wrap. Everybody in this movie is hungry. And it's not just that you had this minuscule amount of food. It's that it came with an energy of this is so special and you will love this. And you walk away emotionally hungry as well as physically hungry because you haven't been served well. It may be beautiful. It may be um, astonishing. It may be a triple somersault for what the chef has made, but it doesn't give you an energy of being nurtured and served and sustained. It's fun to watch the diners show off when most of us feel imposter syndrome in these stuffy situations. Whenever I go wine tasting, for example, it's like, okay, I don't know the vocabulary. So I just, you know. <laughs> I will I will give you one. So like sometimes, yeah. I don't know if you ever do this, but like uh, maybe I sound crazy, but I sometimes end up saying lines from movies in like right. real life yeah, yeah. by accident. And the other day I was at dinner and I had a glass of wine and I was like, mm, faint notes of longing and regret. Yeah. And like now I'm keeping that forevermore. <laughs> Anytime I have some wine, I'm just gonna be like, ah. Oh. That's longing and regret that's very good mm -hmm. i actually watched sideways again do you remember sideways yeah oh, i watched that yes. again partly as research for this just to kind of get into the, i don't know i just watched it <laughs> also i just wanted to watch it and i was like to watch watch it, you research? Yeah. <laughs> not, i've never been wine tasting but i can imagine i don't have a very sensitive palate i guess i can imagine i just think i just assume that you get really drunk during this <laughs> yeah like whenever people are like wine tasting or like here's another glass <laughs> of wine for this thing i'm like dude I need to walk home. Top Gun Maverick soared to new box office heights this year, pulling in nearly a billion and a half dollars worldwide. It's now one of the top grossing movies of all time and an early Christmas gift for some. The action blockbuster will be available to stream globally on Paramount Plus starting December 22nd. From one aviation film to another, Glenn Powell plays the bad boy alongside Tom Cruise in Top Gun Maverick. And now he's starring alongside Jonathan Majors and Joe Jonas in Devotion. It's a Korean War drama based on a true story. And the best part, you can take the whole family to see it. The stars turned out for the red carpet of Devotion at the Regency Village Theater in Westwood.
The film tells the true story of naval fighter pilots, Lieutenant Tom Hudner and Ensign Jesse Brown, who was the Navy's first black carrier pilot during the Korean War. It's quite rare where you, you get to a script and you finish it and you go, oh man, this is my hero. You know, so in addition to everything he's done, how he did it became um, a template, you know, as you said, as a man on, on how to move forward, you know, how to, how to love more, how to be a better citizen, how to be a better partner, how to be a better father, you know. Um, the phrase devotion is not something we use quite often. You belong in the sky, Jesse. Just remember you belong down here with us too, okay? These two guys, Jesse Brown and Tom Hutner, they, they were the best of friends, best of, of brothers, and um, really what friendship's about. You know, they, it took them a minute to get there, but uh, as you know, the story is so unbelievable. And the fact that this world that we live in doesn't know about this story enough, um, I'm so glad that it can be on a big screen. Glenn Powell co-stars with Jonathan Majors. He's a producer on the film after his breakout role as Hangman in Top Gun Maverick. The incredible part is all the things that I got to learn on Top Gun from Tom Cruise in terms of all the aerial flying, all the technology that it requires to pull something like this off. We got to use all of that knowledge, Tom Cruise, 40 years in filmmaking, and we got to put it into this movie. It must be hard being the uh, naval aviator. It's the toughest job there is. It's got everything. I, I think it's a, a movie you can bring your family to. That's why I think it's a brilliant um, date to release it around Thanksgiving. It has a, a love story. It has camaraderie. It has friendship. It's heartache. It has some laughs. It's got it all. Nah, you, that's why you can't always do what you're told. What do you want me to do? Just be my wing man. From the skies to the road, save it for the track. That's the message from CHP in Santa Barbara County after officers clocked this Lamborghini driver going 152 in a 55 mile an hour zone. It's no surprise the driver got a ticket for reckless driving. Some would say it is hard to resist putting pedal to the metal in a Lambo. The sound, the speed, the look, and the true story behind this Italian auto brand is just as good and told in a new movie in theaters now. Signor Ferrari, in my opinion, you make the best cars in the world. But with all my Ferraris, there is a problem, the clutch. I have a solution. If you consider a partnership, Ferrari and Lamborghini. Go back to your tractors, farmer. You heard that right. Genius auto inventor Ferruccio Lamborghini went from being a farmer to creating one of the most prestigious brands in the world. Frank Grillo shines as the determined debonair Mr. Lamborghini. Hi, and you have a Lamborghini behind you. This is the only one I own, my Zoom background here. <laughs> <laughs> I love his humble beginnings and just how he was treated. I had no idea the, the rivalry happened. Yeah, I mean, he and by the way, it's interesting, humble beginnings. He he was a farmer. His fa yeah. father was a farmer. And, uh, you know, this guy came back from from the military, from the war, and, and uh, he was hell bent on creating a tractor company. And, and he did that and became very successful. Um, and yeah, the rivalry was was the genesis, you know, for him starting, you know, this this car company later on in his life. You know, he wasn't uh, he wasn't exactly a young man when he started the company. He was very wealthy. And uh, it was that thing with Ferrari that that uh, ignited this drive in him to make the greatest sports car ever. Tell me why you think that the world needs another luxury car. It's perfection that I am after. Lamborghini, the man behind the legend, was written by the Oscar-winning screenwriter of the movie Crash, Bobby Moresco, co-starring Oscar winner Mira Sorvino as Anita Lamborghini as her husband prepares for the upcoming Geneva Grand Prix, his chance to blow past Ferrari for good. It was kind of easier than I thought. I was a little afraid going into it to kind of portray somebody so special and important and iconic and being in Italy and being Italian. And then I... I just, I found him. I found who I thought he would be. What do you see? Lines on a napkin. What do you see? Be I, because of my Italian roots and, uh, you know, where I'm from and who I grew up around, uh, you know, it was, it was a lot of fun. What are you thinking? Thinking of a car that doesn't exist yet, one that is as strong and powerful and as unforgettable as the bull. You, you love him even more because of it. Yeah, and he was really smart because when he sold the company, one of the stipulations was 
they could never change the name. Mm. They couldn't add it. They could, it could always only be Lamborghini. And so even though he sold the company, uh, you know, a long time ago now, uh, all we know is Lamborghini. And he, he was he was even smart to even when he was leaving and departing the company. So Lamborghini has become I think it has kind of, like you said, surpassed Ferrari is the cool car. when you want to be someone. You buy a Lamborghini when you are someone. Such a great line. Stay tuned for a magical prank we played on one of our own staffers caught on camera. We're gonna go right into room number five. Right this way, guys. We send our production assistant on a shoot under the guise it was a sleep study, but it turned out to be anything but. And country superstar Garth Brooks has a new Las Vegas show and talks about his own holiday traditions with the lot. Welcome to my world, kid. Brand new dream still under construction. The director of The Hunger Games Catching Fire and Mockingjay has a new family adventure, Slumberland, starring Jason Momoa as an eccentric companion who takes a daring young orphan on journeys through a land of dreams. Starring a magical pig and larger than life goose and a bed that sprouts long spider like legs. It's streaming now on Netflix. And they hosted a hidden camera stunt to transport people into the dream world of Slumberland. And I couldn't resist signing up someone on our staff. Cynthia Gonzalez is a production assistant with us. She's up for any and all challenges in the newsroom. So I sent her on a mission, but didn't tell her what for. I think the funniest part was when they asked me, like, what are you here for? And I was like, I don't know. Oh, yeah, you called me. <laughs> You're like, what am I here for? I'm like, wait, what am I here for? Thank you so much for participating in our survey. We're going to go right into room number five. They ask you about your sleep and everything, and I'm like, I'm a very good sleeper. We are obsessed with sleep. I'm going to help you put this eye mask on. And then they're like, yeah, it's a sleep test. So that's when I was like, I love sleeping, so fine by me. <laughs> One key component of this is that you be very relaxed. Are you feeling relaxed? I am, actually. So I'm in this small room, close my eyes, and there was a point where I'm like feeling so peaceful. Well, I want to thank you for taking our survey. Our story takes place in Slumberland. And then he asked you, like, what are you, what are you thinking of? And I said, oh, I, I kind of imagine like Alice in Wonderland, just snowy. Like, that's what I was thinking. Our tale starts in a forest that's high up in the mountains. Do you like nature? I do. So then I, uh, they ask you to take it off, and I take it off. And I think the first thing that popped into my head was like, am I asleep? <laughs> yeah. The little pig started making noises and coming out at me. And that's when I was like, OK. That's weird. And then the goose came out. The goose was huge. This is really weird, because this is exactly what I was imagining. It's like tripping me out. <laughs> Whoa. I was laying down, and I didn't hear any of this. Like, how did I get here? <laughs> OK, so would you sign up for a sleep study again? I would. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love, I love sleeping and um, I love surprises, so it was... Oh good, so yeah, you were able yeah. to sleep that night okay? <laughs> I was. I went and watched the trailer right after. I was like, it makes sense. It all makes sense. And thank you, Cynthia, for being a great sport. We're all jealous of that trip, actually. Now, country superstar Garth Brooks just announced a Vegas residency at Caesars Palace and also shared some of his holiday traditions. Well, congrats on the tour it, with the perfect weather and always love your concerts. I'm so excited and I know your, your lovely wife will be with you and as empty nesters this go around. You know, it's it's like my name should be Garth Butt instead of Garth Brooks because, <laughs> hey, Garth, uh, we like you, Garth Butt. <laughs> is your wife here kind of thing? So anytime that she can be here, I'm sure she'll come out if, you know, if, if she's singing. And I can tell you this, anytime that you and me get to hear that woman sing, 
Me and you are the luckiest people on the planet. Since it's a couple days before Thanksgiving, <laughs> what are your food traditions? Because we already know she can cook up a storm. My mom's from Arkansas, so I love good Southern cooking. What kind of menu do you guys have? Okay, so she believes in dressing, not yes. stuffing. Don't ever call it stuffing, because she'll correct you if you do. <laughs> so she's, she's a dressing girl, but here's the greatest thing she does. So you know the second meal of Thanksgiving where you always go back? There is nothing left because what she does after first meal is take everything on the table and make it into a casserole <laughs> and then put this kind of a crust kind of thing that's going to bake up like a biscuit on top of it. And that's what second meal is, is Thanksgiving casserole. Every bite of everything that day and one spoon at a time. I usually do it with two forks. <laughs> it's fantastic. <laughs> that sounds incredible. So are you a sweet potato pie person or a pumpkin pie person? I'm a, I'm a pumpkin pie person if I have to choose. I'm really not that much of a pie guy. She makes fabulous pies, but she makes, um, she makes cakes, and she makes this sweet potato souffle that everybody, and they use it as a dessert. It's so good. Me and Ms. Sherwood want to say thank you. Thank you, God. Thank you guys for our lives. Well, and let's go back to you. I know I'm talking so much about Trisha. What can we expect in Vegas when we buy our tickets? I am so excited. Well, what I'm hoping is you get a show that's only like it on the planet that night uh, because you start with a clean slate every night. And because it's just you and a guitar or at any time it could be you and the 10 band members going, then everything is up for grabs and everything is wherever the crowd wants to go. So that's what I like about it, the fact that no show will be the same as the one before it or the one after it. Uh, because in a residency, they'll put on a lot of shows, so it's your job as an entertainer to make them different. And what I'm hoping is people leave that place going, you know what, I want to try and get back here tomorrow night to see how different it is. That's, that's going to be the fun of it. Well, I am so excited. How about holiday traditions? You guys big on Christmas? Yeah, well, you know, when you tour, you're gone a lot. So the stadium tour, because of the pandemic, we had to cram a lot of the stadium tour in this last year. So holiday traditions this year, band and crews all staying home. This is a family. Time and distance cannot separate us. Celebrate tonight that you are in rare air. No footprints have ever been where you guys are tonight. I'm so happy for these people because as artists, you're spoiled to death. So you're the last person in the building and the first person out. And the crew is always away from their family, always working. This year, my sincerest love and wish for the best holidays for those men and women in that band and crew that spent the last four years of their life setting it up so I could live my dream. I hope this is the best holiday season for them and for your family as well. Such a sweetheart. Just in time for the holidays, some classic music from the vault is getting a new release. The snow is snowing. The wind is blowing. What's old is new again, and it's part of a new Yuletide catalog, and a Christmas classic returns to the Billboard 100. A signature sound of the season is burning up the Billboard charts again. Mariah Carey's All I Want for Christmas is You is back on the Billboard Hot 100 at number 25. That's based on sales, radio airplay, and official streams. Can you believe it's the 28th anniversary of the holiday mega hit? Well, a brand new Yuletide set of swinging songs could soon join her on the charts. Rick Damigella shows us some new holiday albums from today's biggest singers and one from my favorite jazzy duo. The snow is snowing, the wind is blowing, but I can weather the storm. What do I care how much it may storm? Louis Armstrong's first official Christmas.